And of course, we continue to watch the markets. The Dow's now down uh, about 750 points, but holding up relatively well. FinTech, PayPal is just down about one and a half percent. Square is actually higher. And this year's Disruptor 50 list features a number of FinTech companies while attracting high valuations in the private markets. It's been a different story for the stocks once going public. Julia has more on how investors should be thinking about these valuations, which keep coming in, Julia. That's right. And the fintech sector is not only what we're talking about today, but is the second most represented category in this year's Disruptor 50 list with nine companies in total. And fintechs are some of the highest valued companies on the list. Six of the nine are valued at more than $10 billion. Eight-time disruptor Stripe is worth $95 billion. And Checkout.com, a Stripe competitor, is worth $40 billion. But these price tags are just what they were worth based on their last fundraises before the public tech stocks got pummeled. Take a look at the growth in the valuation of Chime, a three-time disruptor, growing 72% from May of last year to this year, while public SoFi went public in April of 2021, saw its market cap fall 54% in that same time period. The differential is even greater for Web3-focused Disruptor 50 companies. Blockchain.com's private valuation has grown by 186% from last May, while Coinbase's stock price has fallen by about 76%. So this market sell-off is surely encouraging private companies to hold off on going public. In the meantime, we're hearing a lot, like what you just heard from Lightspeed's Alex Tausig, about this idea that the downturn can be an opportunity for startups to hone their business models and emerge stronger. A lot of VCs are encouraging their investments to make critical changes to their businesses and even, John, to slow the pace of hiring. But there's this problem, right, with just maintaining their existing valuation. If everybody sort of knows it's inflated, this is the currency that they're using to hire. And even if they're not hiring as much, even their existing employees got to get a little antsy thinking, well, you know, I'm, I've got this compensation in stock. I got this equity, but is it worth anything? Do I need to go somewhere else maybe somewhere more more established where the stock has come in and I might do better. Yeah, there is this concern. Companies don't want to take a down round. They don't want to raise money at a lower valuation than what they last raised at because that does not look good and is certainly not reassuring for employees. So I think we're going to see a lot of companies try to hold off on raising money if it's going to mean raising at a lower amount. But you got the employees who are holding perhaps this inflated equity that they might... Well, we'll see. Eventually, either the market's going to correct back up or, or... Somebody's going to have to take their medicine. Or a little bit of both. (laughs) Or a little bit of both.